ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to get a sneak preview of the most expensive motor coach paint job in the world. Those of you that follow the channel know I'm a huge fan of the world famous artist Dean Lux. Has all these crazy paint jobs and everything else. He goes, I got your guy, Dean Lux, Indiana. Here he comes. And we're going to get a sneak preview of the paint design for his new Liberty coach today. This is going to be on another level. Dean, how you doing, sir? Hey, good to see you again, Andrew. Likewise. Now, last week we shared with the viewers that you're getting a new Liberty coach. You were just showing me the paint designs, and this is going to be the most expensive motor coach paint job ever done in the history of motor coaches? You bet, but you know, it's not the most expensive motor home yet. <laughs> Cause we didn't get a new one, you know, we went back in years. And that whole idea is to take the older one and do some things that really wouldn't happen on a new one. Along with that journey there, we're gonna have fun with the paint. Now, over the years, you've done all kinds of projects. I've gotta ask you, what's the most expensive piece of artwork that you've ever done in your history? Well, you know, we've done a lot of Liberty Coaches. Yes, and uh, all those take between 1,500 and 1,700 hours to paint. And then out of those, the ones I've owned, I bumped them up to where they're a couple thousand hours. And then the last coach we did, the 2017, I've got about 3,000 hours in that coach between the trailer and the paint job on the coach and the way it was originally painted with what was changed on it. Those are real expensive on, on just that end of it. A few of the real rare pieces that people may not know is the boat we did for Puma. And that was the Volvo Ocean Race, and Volvo owns Prevo. And about 2012, I think the race was between 12 and 13. This was a sailboat race around the world, 37,000 miles, if I recall. And they stopped at many different places around the world and would put on a sailboat race in the harbor, and then they race to the next part of the world, and they do another harbor race. So this boat was 70 feet long. The mast is over 130 feet. And there's just some details with it that just are over the top. There's a theory that because my is painted like an octopus, that it's actually acting like a lure for whales, and that whales are attracted to it. I think that's possible. Yeah, I've seen some incredible documentaries on that boat, and I'll even leave one of those in the description below. How many hours, you were telling me some insane work went into that, like there was like 90,000 circles or something. What were the hours that were put into that? So there's some great details that, that happened that we'll show you pictures of. There's a ghosting effect, like a stingray effect that was on that boat. Off of doing a square footage calculation, there's around 98,000 of these circles. Some poor girl in Indiana had to pull all those circles out. That had to be designed, cut on the computer, weeded out of masking material, numbered so we knew where they went on the boat, shipped to from Indiana to Rhode Island, reapplied on the boat and painted, and then tore down uh, just to get this effect. So 98,000 of just this ghosting look. Well, then the puma symbol, how many of those were in there? The little puma, like the raindrop? Yeah, so you had water drops on the back of the boat. And there's 32, 36,000 of those, and they were in three colors. <laughs> so each one, once you head out this whole back deck area, so if you ever see the boat and you see back where the steering wheel's at on the back of the sailboat, they'll show some close-ups once in a while in the videos, and there's over 32,000 of those water droplets painted in three different colors and shadowed. That's really an incredible piece of artwork, and the timing on that too, even for your shop to be able to handle such a project, it was kind of in that like 2010 era where literally your entire shop spent a portion of their year from my understanding on that project the shop was working on it for probably three months total maybe even four and that started with a little bit before i started getting involved we started cutting stencils and getting stuff in before i even started painting it so we had a, probably a month and a half of just cutting stencils and getting sizes, getting the proper dimensions, locations for how we we're gonna paint it and, and getting everything organized just so we could go to Rhode Island and do what we had to do. So about how many hours do you think went into that project? 
And how much dough would that be in today's money? Well, it's hard to say on the hours on that one. I don't even know that that was probably at a time when I wasn't even focused on the hours. We were just focused on getting it done. But you take eight, 10 people for three months, we had a lot of hours in that. The money, you'd be approaching seven figures in today's money to be able to do that. Yeah, and here's a uh, little Volvo Ocean Race. There's a little memorabilia from the uh, Puma boat there. I know, and then uh, the idea was to get sponsored with shoes, because at the time, everything was red, black, and silver I had. Yeah. So then I've got the uh, shoes and I just decided let's have all the guys that built the boat sign the shoes. Oh, that's cool. So Ken Reed was the skipper. So another good memorabilia from that project of months and months of hard work. And then was Ferrari affiliated with that project as well or? No, haha. -ha. Just Puma and Puma makes the Ferrari shoes. Now that was an incredible project. One of the largest pieces of artwork of that magnitude in the world. Uh, now what are some of the other projects that you've done that you can remember most expensive, uh, craziest projects? So we got a great project we did with the powerboat crowd. Customer was out of Canada and he has a 46 foot boat and wanted Superman on the side. Now his name ended in a Z, so instead of having an S for Superman, we changed it to a Z. But when you see this project and the detail on it, it's phenomenal. And back in the day, that's a $325,000 paint job. So in this day and age, you could double that and be in the 600,000 probably for, for everything that we did on that. Yeah, and that was the semi, the trailer, and the boat. And a funny story about that is that was actually one of my detailing customers down in Arizona. So you and, already knew him. Yeah, I already knew him and Dean was painting boats with the same guy. Big thanks to that gentleman because he was keeping us both uh, busy back in the 2000s. Well, I'm looking forward to showing the folks your new paint job that's gonna change history in the motor coach world, but any other memorable projects or pieces of artwork that really stick out over your career? So, you know, I love the turtles. We're literally going on four years now painting turtles whenever I have a chance to paint anything that I would paint for myself. Yeah, and this is a cool turtle uh, painting behind you. What is the story on this particular painting? And this is much smaller, but these are- uh... yeah, if you see, you know, this is only like 18 inches wide. So uh, 40 inches tall. So it's a relatively small painting for me. And in order to get the detail I wanted out of it, we went to oil paints. And the oils are doing everything I thought they would. It's just, it's been amazing. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the turtle paintings and seeing them in person, they're just another level. They really grab your attention and really make a room. What would something like this cost for a turtle painting? Well, you know, take the size out of it because you don't normally think that uh, because it's smaller, it's a lot less. But in this case, it's about $20,000 to do this painting because of the oils and the length of time they take to dry and the detail you can get out of it. Now just working at a much closer distance than what I normally would. Do you have any idea how many hours go in of your time go into a painting like this? Well, this will probably be six months of time every time I can get to paint it, but there, I might have to let it sit for three or four days in between I can come back. And then I spend a couple of days on it and let it sit for a couple of days. It just drags it out further, but I'm not really doing a series of other paintings while I'm working on this one. And if you're ever at an RV resort where Dean's at, a lot of times six, seven in the morning, you can catch Dean out painting turtles. I've seen you paint oh, all yeah. over the country. Oh yeah, I get up early. The folks out there, they want to know what's your new plans for your new bus, most expensive paint job. Can you show us let's, a, let's a go sneak preview? Sounds yeah. good. Dean, I hear there's some top secret stuff right here. Oh yeah, you weren't supposed to see that here. Let me get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, so what's going on here? Well, uh, this is, just remember, these are ideas, right? I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I just kind of have a direction to bring a lot of value to taking our home with us, having our shell around us. What would be better than doing a turtle a giant turtle on the side of a bus. And I think we've seen a lot of the viewers actually bring in this comment, and you mentioned that the viewers had some of the inspiration for this? It absolutely came from them. I listen and I watch what uh, the comments are, and I love all of them, good, bad, or indifferent. First time uh, someone actually asked me when I was out and about, would I paint a turtle on the side? Why don't I do that? And I'm like, no, why would I do that? <laughs> the more I thought about it, man, that uh, really makes sense with how we travel. We don't travel real fast. You're not traveling by plane. You're going down the road. You're usually slower than everybody else. You got your home with us. You got your shell with us. We're kind of protected there going down the road like a turtle. Why not just put the one of the great sea turtles on the side? I love the idea. Now, we know how expensive 
your turtle oil paintings and regular paintings are. So this is gonna be a really big turtle with a lot of detail work. Are you gonna paint the turtle yourself? What's the plan? That I will paint the whole turtle myself on both sides. Now you're showing me a few different ideas here. You've got three different renderings that you're thinking you might go with? Yeah, I've got three different ideas right now to start with. They're all got the turtle on the side, but what else do I wanna do? And what I'm concerned with is I went retro with this bus. This is the first XL that we've had. Prevo makes the H series, and then we've painted two XLs for Liberty, and this would be the third one. And I wanted to go retro, and I almost want to do a throwback from the 80s era with the van conversion, with the murals on the side, which then also leads into it's the first time we ever worked with Liberty Coach, we put murals on the side of the coaches for them. Yeah, we've talked about that. What was the first mural that you did for Liberty Coach back in the 90s? Well, I think the first one was with uh, Joanne and Lou Wasserman. And if I recall correctly, we had reached out to say, hey, we have this talent to be able to paint coaches and do murals and such. And they go, oh, we got someone that needs a mural done. So they called up and we worked it out. And that was really the first time I think Liberty Coach and Frank got to see how our team worked together to come over and accomplish this task. While they were building the interior, I was painting the murals on the exterior. And then at night, we would clear a section so that we could get the clear coat and the protective coating on it while they're still working on the interior. Wow, and do you remember what that mural was? Uh, yeah, Joanna Lou Wasserman and they had, uh, called it Tropical Magic. And so they had lions and tigers on one side, we had hummingbirds, tropical magic, lettering, and then on the other side, there was two monkeys hugging each other. Oh, you have cool. to see it. You also did a Randy Travis coach, I believe, back in that same era? Yeah, a few years later. We actually ended up doing three buses for Randy, one for Discover Card. At that point, Discover Card came out with artist series cards that everyone could pick which one you wanted. Randy loved the uh, Adobe scene of the Adobe Village, and so we put that on the side of the coach. And it was very interesting how that was done because the coach is a gold metallic and if you put solid colors on the gold metallic they do something different and they don't blend well together so i decided to do every color out of metallic so i take the gold metallic i add some blue to it that's going to be this guy i take the gold metallic add some brown to it and black to it and it starts to be the shadows in the adobe village just layer upon layer built this painting. When it was out in the sun, it did that most amazing thing. At one angle, the Adobe Village stood out, and at another angle, it just totally went away because you'd see the sparkle of the metallics would make and cancel out everything in the mural. So it was just a neat effect that worked out very well. Yeah, definitely a historic coach. Now, you're going to be doing some effects we were talking about on your new Liberty Coach here. Can you share with the viewers some of the effects that you're thinking of uh, doing? Well, you know, some of that stuff's going to be top secret here in the beginning, Andrew. We can't, yes, you know, we can't uh, disclose everything that's going to happen. I understand and respect that you still have a lot of work left in front of you. Now, I want to see what the viewers think about the three designs that you came up with. We're going to show you guys designs one, two, and three, and it would be awesome if you could drop a comment below and let Dean know which design you like best because he does read the comments. So Dean, what's design number one and what are we looking at? Design number one, I've decided to go with like a blue wheel wells. And if you see, there's little white letters around the tires. I can accomplish that in a few different ways. And I'm not sure that that's the lettering that goes on it, but I do like the concept of the lettering because in the 80s, there was white letter tires. Now, yes, how sir. do we throw something like that into the mix on a bus? The, the blues, of course, has to happen. I'm trying to hide the window, that has to happen. And the size of a turtle has to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how big? I mean, that's like, that's looking like a 10 foot turtle or so. How I big? would say so, yeah. So design number one of some kind of cool lines flowing. What, uh, what does design number two look like? So what you have here is the lines are more flowing and I want to keep it simple. I do want like this stainless steel area and I want the painted area and they're divided and, and you don't see a whole lot coming down in here because this bus isn't about all paint. I'm trying to use all the elements together. So have a nice flowing design and then gets into some other colors. So it's not just the blues anymore. We got a little purple, a little aqua and the little ribbon effect from the water flowing from the turtle moving, you know, it adds a, a sense of motion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like number two. I think this one might be my favorite so far. Just a cool kind of an electric vibe in the back of the coach, but what is number three looking like? 
So number three, we have gone and painted the supports and they would match what's, what's behind it there. Again, nice flowing lines and I don't want too many angulars. I got a little bit up here, but then everything else just kind of flows because I think the serenity of the turtle, floating, being in nature, swimming, just needs to lend itself more towards the direction of what's going on here. What kind of a time frame do you think we could see something like this? It's gonna fit one of two things, whether I can get it picked up in mid-May and have it done for Sturgis, could be pressing it, but it is like how I like to do things, or it happens when I come back from Sturgis before I come back to Florida. Well, Dean, I can't wait to see what you come up with and see it all come to life. Really appreciate you and all of the support for the channel. I'll also leave a link to your website if folks want to buy uh, turtle paintings or inquire with you about artwork. Really appreciate you, sir. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, everybody. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing this. Yeah, likewise. Really appreciate all of you, and we hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again. See you, bye.